when it had to be basketball to take me out of that environment. Because I was getting involved with some, some, some dangerous things. I'm excited about one thing. I'm excited about this thing called a UDID. This is what makes us different and better. We can select a year, select a video category, upload a video, it goes directly into our into our vault. But these two guys run out the house. One of them got my father's AK, the other got, got, got my father's 22 rifle. And they just run through the yard. I always think about, like, what if I was five minutes earlier? Would I even still be alive? What's going on guys? It is Monday, August 12, 2024. We have 81 days before we launch the All Dreams platform to all amateur athletes across the world. Man, we're like tipping on getting out of the 80s and going to the 70s. I think this is going to be fast. I think I think this is going to happen fast and Thank you guys for joining me on this journey, documenting this entire process of launching our platform, right? Um, it is 7.45 a.m. I'm running a little bit behind uh, because I had a late night last night. I had a visitor, uh, my, hom my homie Ty, shout out to him. He came through and uh, come check out the Dreams HQ chop it up uh he's a basketball player so we played basketball yesterday then we went to the steam room sauna jumped in the pool and uh he wanted to come back to the hq check it out and everything he lives somewhere around this neighborhood and um man he's a basketball player he's from jersey he's a young guy 28 and um ty wants to play basketball uh he wants to become a overseas professional basketball player. And of course, man, you know, that's my forte, right? Uh, that's, where, that's what I did. And uh, I told him, man, if I was 28, I would be going after that dream. Like, full-fledged, right? Even at 44 and Project 45, we are still if we can get our injuries and everything fixed and everything and like, you know, the stem cell on our, my shoulder and my knee, I think it's very, very possible that I can possibly become a professional basketball player again uh, when I'm 45 years old, which is close, very, very close. So today we have um, just a regular work day. Uh, top of the week, we have our uh, entrepreneur in residence uh, meeting. I'm excited about one thing. I'm excited about this thing called a UDID, right? You know, our platform is in the process of being developed. And with the UDID, what happens is we get to actually see the progress and use the app on our phone. So that's going to be coming sometime this week where we'll a we're able to see that and see the progress. So that's something that's very, very exciting. Also, I have had contact with our first mom influencer. How we're gonna roll out our platform is moms of young athletes will be our influencers, okay? Not athletes, our influencers. Moms will be our first line of influencers to use the app for their, for their young kid, their young athlete kids and raise money on our platform, capture all of the videos that they have on their phone you know, and um, that's our first line of influencer marketing. So I have contact with an influencer mom and uh, hopefully this week we'll get on a call with her. I'll uh, film it if so, because we're documenting the process. So that's all I have for right now. Hope you guys have a good day. By the time you see this, it'll be tomorrow, but happy Monday. Let's go.
There you go. Got it. So this is this is the this is the platform. I'll just go ahead and start it over real fast. So you have a splash screen. Mm -hmm. Then you'll it, right here you'll have like athletes or whatever that you can explore. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you want profile of course you have to sign in. So you, you sign in. Choose our interests. Say we're basketball, football. Now, mm -hmm. congratulations, we successfully signed in. So now we want to explore. So we go to this profile. This is how it will look. We can explore athletes or whatever. And then you go to this right here where you can see people that have supported this athlete. But then you have the, the, the vault, right, where 1997, you have videos of their store, story, training. So synchronize into like different categories, right? Mm -hmm. So the paywall is this right here. So once they've uploaded a certain amount of videos, when they try to upload a video, this will happen right here. I got it. So this is this would be the paywall they can purchase or whatever. That's for the side of the athlete, the side of the dreamer. Now, if I want to support this guy, what happens is I can enter his vault for the five dollars. I can give a monthly donation, uh, whatever I want. But to enter his vault is five dollars, and then I purchase it. And now I can we'll be able to see all of his his complete journey in his vault, all of those videos, which would be um, everything from the years and everything like that. So then the athlete can also share their profile and things like that. So also for the athlete, so say say I'm say I'm the say I'm an athlete. This is my profile. I want to upload a, a video or whatever. I can put in a video title description. This is what makes us different and better. We can select a year, select the video category, upload the video, it goes directly into our into our vault. When people support us, we can go to our 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 money or whatever, withdraw our money, you know, specify the amount and withdraw the money that people have supported us with or whatever. K through twelve, is it college? Is it professional? Is it post college and amateur is it is it is it is it right so is you so be as specific as you can is all i'm saying right so in your case athletes that want to capture store their sports journeys okay now it, that's good that's a good start is there a category of people that do that like are these the amateur athletes that you said that's the word you used before um is is this specifically amateur athletes it's not specifically amateur athletes i i think personally most athletes are doing it now okay could be anybody yeah okay all right so that that so it's like your desires to capture and store their sports journey so if you say i've looked around enough and go this is a thing i i just i can show you if you want me to show you but i can show you it's a thing I can find so many people that are got their sports journeys captured somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, so that's a pretty good start. Um, they want to build a community now. Um, why do they want to build a community? They want to build, they want to build a community so they can have support and have people watching, watching them. So, so they can gain attention which the attention that they gain could possibly get them recruited to go to another level in their career. Okay. So, um, if you were to, to go out and say, I want to do some, I want to do some interviews and you were to go f try to find somebody to talk to about before they, even your solution, you just want to know about their journey. Right. And I, I think it has something to do with uh, the journey of interested in capturing your journey or building community or earning money. So those three things. Now, you could put a survey and say, I'm looking for I'm looking for athletes who wish right, to do the following three things. You could actually do that and just get them to call you or email you or text you, whatever, and say, I'd like to I would be willing to participate in a discussion 
because my first um, a little bit of a dilemma is how do I find these people? That's what I'm asking. How do you find these people? So how would you find these people that are specifically for these three categories? What would you what do you do or what did you do or what would you do? going on man I'm out here chilling man chilling by the water just got finished listening to um, some videos about uh, this whole thing going on with Black Sam interview it's the first time talking about uh, his brother Nip Nipsey and um, It's crazy because like two weeks ago I had made this video about hip hop culture, how I don't like it, how culture is how you behave. And I got all these people in my in my comments because they love the music, they love hip hop, they talking shit about me. And that's fine. Like, but I think the facts remain. And we could just use Nipsey as a as an example. I mean, that was a good brother. He was in his his early 30s, taken out way too soon by people that they said was close to him. Like that's kind of what's coming out right now, or whatever. And um, this is black people, bro. And people don't want to admit it, but. That's just the black community, the black American community. That's 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 what it's about, for the most part. And um, look, I can attest to that to 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 the black community experience growing up on the east side of Buffalo, Coons Avenue. I can attest to it. I remember, I'll tell a quick story. Cause people look at me like I'm crazy for getting up out of, you know, for for making the move to to get away from that environment completely. Now this is quality of life, man. This is this is peace right here. You feel what I'm saying? But I remember one day I was coming home from school, man. I must have been like 14, something like that. My mother's dropping me off and this we was living, you know, I was living with my dad at the time on Coons Avenue and um, I was a freshman in high school, matter of fact. My mother's dropping me off. And uh, when we used to go through the, go to the, to the house, we used to go through the back door. We ain't used to go through the front door. And um, I'm walking through the yard. So I open the gate, walking through the yard I'm going right to the back door soon, but like, like, I would say like two steps before I even go to the back door on the back porch, two guys running out, 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 the, out, out of the house. And my mother, she's still like, she like, she's still right there, but she pulling, she pulling back out of the yard, you know? Luckily she didn't completely leave. And luckily I wasn't there sooner, but these two guys run out the house one of them got my father's AK, the other got, got got my father's 22 rifle. And they just run through the yard. And um, I always think about, like, what if I was five minutes earlier? Would I even still be alive? And the crazy thing about it is maybe like a week before that, because my dad used to go to like night school. And it was a guy that came to my house a neighborhood guy that was known in the neighborhood as a bad guy. And he knocked on my door, maybe like eight, nine o'clock at night. And he asked for one of my friends that I think they both went to school together at Kensington High School. And it shook me up, honestly. Lo and behold, that same guy was the same guy that 
broke into the house. My father told me to be a citizen of the world. And that's what I'm doing right now, is being a citizen of the world. So, man, it's just, you know, it's just a messed up thing, man. And the people that I feel for is the young people that's engulfed in it and that won't have no opportunity. The ones that I feel for is the guys that's gonna lose their life and won't have the opportunity to see better things. The guys that I feel for is the guys that's gonna go to jail, tricked out of their life by fucking with the gangs and all of this hip hop bullshit, whatever is rap, whatever you wanna call it, devil music, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? And it's not all hip hop, it's not all hip hop, but it's the majority of it, that lifestyle. And those are the ones that I feel bad for because at least me at 44, I got an opportunity to see other things, but it had to be basketball to take me out of that environment because I was getting involved with some, some, some dangerous things. And I was being pushed towards those dangerous things, no matter how much talent I had in other things. And God bless me to be able to, to, to get out of that alive. A lot of my friends did not make it out alive. A lot of my friends did not make it out with long, without long incarceration bids that damn near ruined their life. And it's going to be another crop. It's going to, it's, it's, it's a never ending story. It's a never ending story. And the young guys, they ain't gonna look up to a guy like me. And that's why, you know, they look up to the guys that's shiny and that, you know, that they got the shine on. They got, they, they the hood stars. I'm boring. I'm boring. I'm not loud, man. I'm just trying to build my company and, and take care of my family and live a good life and, and make impact in the world. That's all I'm trying to do. But, man, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle, man. Yo, them dudes, man. Them dudes was, them dudes was hustlers, man. Them dudes was hustlers, man. I've, I heard a story that WAC 100 said today that he bumped into Nipsey on, on Sunset Boulevard when he was coming up, man. He had a backpack, told man, support, yo, man, support this, man, donate to this. And and he was doing that. And then all the way he made it to where he made it for them niggas to kill him. Trash ass community, man. Trash ass community. I'm out, man.